Hey everybody, uh, it's me, Nathaniel, Scrambles Virginiac with Recruit Rivals uh, and the College Esports Network uh, doing another um, edition of our series where we speak with collegiate coaches from around the nation. Um, lately, we've been getting a lot of the CLOL action in the East, which is awesome because it gives us the opportunity to tell those narratives, advance those storylines, and give people something to attach to. Um, with me today is the coach for Harrisburg, uh, Pennsylvania. Um, you may notice something a little bit different in the fact that it's a huge Taylor Swift fan. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's uh, Alex X Special Chew. Now, um, we do need to talk about the fact that uh, you've been a professional player um, because a lot of who we get as our... Um, as our audience are like moms and dads, brothers, sisters, girlfriends, people who aren't necessarily plugged into the League of Legends scene, right? Um, so just to do the the laundry list real quick, I mean, you've been on Dignitas, TSM, Team Curse, which rebranded Team Liquid, all the way to your days on Phoenix One, and then everything in between. I mean, international tournaments, uh, league play. To say you've been there and back again is really quite an understatement at this point, right? Um, yeah, I think um, definitely among the collegiate coaches, I'm probably one of the most experienced, the most um, well decorated. I've been a veteran of League Legends since the very, very beginning. Yeah, I'm playing okay. League for pretty much nine years now, um, so I've seen it all, and it, it's pretty crazy for me to to be in this position. Um, but it's also been really rewarding for me. And a big thing for me was that I didn't have a flexible schedule um, that I could enter into the professional scene with and I was unsure where I wanted to take things and um, mainly it was the director of esports at Harrisburg, uh, Chad, history teacher, uh, Smelty, pretty much said, hey look, like I want you to work with us and I think it's a good opportunity for both of us and he was like, I can work around a schedule, you know, obviously there'd be some things here and there that I have to go to, some lands, that sort of stuff. But uh, for the most part, he has been very accommodating and allowed me to still, you know, put my feet in the water of, of collegiate esports and just esports in general, but also just deal with all my family stuff that I had to go through um, mostly at the end of last year and early this year. Yeah, very cool. And that's actually the first thing that I think people will start to ask is the first thing I want to talk about is like connecting the dots right from A to B. How do we go from LCS to, you know, coaching at the collegiate level? And I think a lot of people would undeservingly kind of put that as I don't want to say a downgrade, but they would they just don't they may not put that as of much esteem where in my mind it's more like you're at the top you hit the top you've touched the sun right and now you're reaching down to help others do the same um because now you're in a position where you help build the foundation of the next um generation of league players at the professional level right um so i don't feel like i feel like it's just on the other side of the fence at this point so it sounds like they reached out to you and was that like a connection that you had before or was it just out of left field? Was it just completely like a surprise to you when it happened or? Well, so I think in esports, a lot of people just reach out to all their friends, all their people who they come in contact with over the years. And sometimes things just work out. And that was one of the cases where I wasn't expecting much. I honestly was going to take a half a year or a year off from, from all league, all esports. But it ended up being an opportunity where I could still handle all my personal stuff while also doing a uh, collegiate and it, it's very rewarding actually i think um i think i was a little bit hesitant at first because like you said it is seen as a downgrade but at the same time working with guys who are so motivated to want to get better and to succeed at the collegiate level is is rewarding and it, it differs from lcs and uh, academy where a lot of players tend to have much more much more, uh, I guess, personality, and, and you could even say ego, and that often comes uh, in clash with coaches and when I am here, um, things that I say tend to kind of get to just go through, and it's a nice difference. Yeah, I feel like, and this is just in the context of you know the few minutes we've been talking, but I remember you know Dardog did an interview when Hooney came on to Echo Fox, and he was kind of. 
I mean, obviously, Dardock is a strong-minded individual. He has kind of his mind made up of how he wants to play the game and how things should operate. And then when Hooney comes in, you know, that's someone that he conceded to. So I can understand when you say, you know, yeah, the the professional scene, those guys have it kind of nailed down what they want to do. Whereas now you're working with people who are moldable, who want to learn from you, who have, I would assume, an eagerness and an openness to work with you, which is what Dardock became when, you know, Hooney came onto that team. Um, so I can understand where that would be like refreshing for you. Yeah, I mean, since I, especially in collegiate scene, you don't spend as much time on a day to day, especially since I'm working remote as well. Uh, it's nice to not have to deal with that aspect as well and just kind of focus on teaching the game and getting the guys to work together and more and more of that coaching aspect rather than trying to earn the respect of the players in the first place. I think. Um, I guess something that is difficult in, in League of Legends because it's so new. Coaches often have played less years than players. And when that happens, there's a lot more pushback. And a lot of times, there's a lot of facilitation, which is important in both collegiate and LCS. But sometimes the coach doesn't really have as much effect. I think in the collegiate scene, you have much more power and much more ability to affect the players and, and influence their growth and improve their, their game plan. Yeah, and I think that's that's got to be a big deal for Harrisburg, right? Like, I can understand why you were an attractive option for him. You'd been coaching um, for Golden Guardians Academy, right? Um, it was Golden Guardians Academy um, for the first split out while also playing, and then Golden mm-hmm. Guardians main team in the second split of uh, summer last year. Yeah. So I have a bit of experience um, coaching LCS as well. Yeah, so I can see I can see where that would synergize and and why you'd be such a good option for them. Now, do you plan to keep to just stay remote, or are you gonna move to Pennsylvania, or where where is that so, standing? Yeah, so a big reason why I took this position was because I didn't need to go there to be there in person, and mm-hmm. that's because I had to do a lot of family stuff. Um, but at the same time, um, I have promised them that I'll be out there for a couple of events. And I'm actually flying out next week, um, like in Monday or the Sunday, um, to be with them for a couple of days to prepare for their lands and prepare for the U-Law playoffs. Yeah. Uh, I think being in there in person is definitely better, but due to circumstances, um, it wasn't as easy for me. And it's it's been it seems fine. I think we've been doing good um, despite everything. So let's talk about that. I mean, working remotely, like. Um... A lot of things I've talked to other coaches about, like what's your all's practice culture like? What's your team culture like? What's your uh, like? What's your scrim culture like? So the biggest thing that I ask from the guys um, is for all of them to put in 100% effort when it comes to practice. Not only do we have less hours than you know a standard LCS or academy team, we will play uh, three uh, three games a day and or three scrims a day uh, with a few in houses here and there. Uh, extra, but our hours are very limited. So any time that's wasted is just a waste of my time, a waste of their time. And I really emphasize that from them. I really want them to put them, put them, put for them to put in all their effort. And it's also nice to have ten players that are uh, flexible for for usage, as sometimes players just are having the best day, or sometimes they are putting in the best effort. And I'm able to to have other players who can step up and kind of push them as well. Um, but at the same time, when they're not playing together, they're also helping each other learn and improve their own gameplay. So there's a huge camaraderie that there is that, there is, um, that most colleges don't have. Most, most teams I've been a part of don't really have either. It's very rare to have 10 players who are all working together and willing to work together and willing to improve together. And that's something that we definitely have an advantage over. I'm pretty, pretty sure most other teams. Yeah. So that, Okay. So that's good. So that tells me, like, the... Let's say you have your starting five, right? Do the other five, are they playing in any ancillary tournaments, you know? Are they doing any kind of regional things locally or maybe just something online for them? Like, is it considered like a junior varsity type situation? Or is it literally just like we run a 10-man roster and, you know, the five hot hands are playing this week? Um, It's definitely more like the second one where we have two or we have 10 full players Mm-hmm. And um, we have five that kind of start at, this, at any point in scrims, in our games. I, I know in ULOL, for example, they limit you to only six players. Mm-hmm. So there's limitations on that. But for practice, there is no limitation. So for whatever reason, maybe a certain player has a champ pull um, that is more fitting for the patch. Then I'll bring him in for a couple games. 
and see how that goes. Just, just things like that, and that allows me to be more flexible in our practice. For sure. Okay. So fluid ten man, um, because again, like a lot of people that end up watching this kind of content are people who are looking for a university. So um, that'll be something that they can think about when they're considering Harrisburg. Um, is the fact, I, and I would like that honestly. If if I'm a kid at home and I want to go play for Harrisburg, and I know that if I get on the team, I I just go in and I can earn my spot. Like that's attractive to me. You know what I mean? I. I'm personally not into the situations where like, you know, you've got a group of like juniors or or even maybe even seniors at this point, because some of the colleges have been doing it for about three years. So they've got some juniors and seniors out there. Most are generally like freshmen and sophomores though, because they've only been recruiting for like a year or two. Um, But I would, I would like the situation where I can come in, I can work hard, I can earn my spot um, and not necessarily have to like, you know, just wade through the like the red tape and senior. That's definitely something that is different uh, from the way I handle things. I like to reward players for putting in the best effort. If they're playing more solo queue, if you're putting a lot of effort in, in practice, and I can see that, uh, I can notice that, and I'll reward you for that. Whether it's game time, whether that's scrim time, um, individual meetings, there's a lot, a lot of things that I can help the players with. Yeah. And my biggest goal is to help every single player improve in the way they want to. Um, not every player wants to go into LCS, not every player plans to, but all of them want to do well in the collegiate. And I want all of them to succeed, whether or not they decide to play next year or not, or if they, you know, whatever, whatever the situation is, when I'm here, my only goal is to help all of them improve. And obviously, I can only spend so much time, I'm only one person, but I do want everybody to at least get a slice of the pie. Um, how big that slice is, I don't really know, but every person on, on that roster, I'm dedicated to helping them improve. Awesome. Man, that's perfect. That's... Again, just from where I said, that's exactly what I would want to hear from a coach. Like if it were me as a recruit or if it were like my son or daughter as the recruit, you know. Um, so that's good. I'm glad I'm glad that you guys have that mentality. How is that reciprocated with like administration? Do you touch that much? Like do you know because a lot of schools do, they'll either get pushback or they'll get like overwhelming support or you know what I mean? There doesn't seem to be like a lot of middle of the road. But do you, how's the admin at Harrisburg? Are you aware or? Yeah, so I'm very close with their esports director, Chad. Um, he's been, he's a guy that I've been contacting with since the very beginning and he handles everything above me. And it's nice on my end where I don't have to handle as much of the logistics and just focus a lot more on the, the coaching aspect. Uh, but in terms of like any issues that we have had, he's been very quick to respond. Sometimes things are just out of our control, um, you know, it's school, so there's a lot, yeah. lot of things that you know right. the, the guys have to do, uh, whether it's like physical training or uh, study hall. There's a lot of mandatory um, kind of extras that no matter what, I I'm not gonna be able to get the guys out of. Um, but regardless, we still spend a lot of time. We were able to spend, um, we were able to dedicate scrim time every single day. And for example, for this week uh, in preparation for our match, we were able to get out of study hall an hour early, and I can grab the guys for extra game in houses and talk to them before uh, even our practice. And small things like that are just um, just like the tip of the iceberg of little commendations that uh, the school is willing to do in order to allow, to allow us to succeed, which a lot of schools actually don't do. They, in terms of, they don't have any sort of um, funding or, or even a facility for them to play in. It's just, yeah. it's very ragtag for sure. I've done interviews with Stony Brook and I've done interviews with Waterloo. Mm-hmm. And they're of the consensus that you guys, to put it in con, they're the New York. You're the New York Yankees, basically of the East. Um, kind of like what you mentioned before, where like Stony Brook um, is not, you know, they're they're not um, scholarshiped or anything like that. Um, Waterloo, most of them just practice online from either their dorm room or their apartment, their home, you know, stuff like that. So. Um, somewhat they feel like it's a New York Yankees versus the Bad News Bears type situation. Um, would you agree with that or no? Um, I mean, to be honest, I've never thought about the other teams in, in terms of what funding they have. I just see it as we have our guys and we're going to do the best that we can. And I don't know what other teams have. I don't really do that research. I don't really care. All I really care is what they're playing and how we can beat it and that's all i tell my guys i don't give them any pressure in terms of this is, this is a must win or anything like that yeah. all i see is we've been practicing hard let's show it off that's all i care about and whether or not we win or lose doesn't doesn't really matter as long as we try our best 
we're putting in our best effort every single game, every single day, every single game. And in the end, if that's not enough, then that's just not enough sometimes. What are the differences going into tomorrow versus Waterloo um, that Harrisburg will, you know, come out with with the win? Our biggest asset that we're gonna be able to use is gonna be our, our adaptability, our players, because I mean, it seems like our players play more of League of Legends and a lot of these other teams, they practice more, they practice harder. We're just gonna have a water champ pool, we're just gonna have more flexibility. And for us, uh, what's interesting about Collegiate uh, compared to the higher leagues is that we play on the patches immediately after they're out. So we have to adapt much more quickly and having me there for my, my experience and, and my knowledge and having the guys who are willing to put in so much time into the game, I see no reason for us to to be losing uh, matches um, just due to the lack of practice or any any other excuse. We might have a bad day here and there, but I feel like from how we've been practicing and how how much we're able to get better, I don't really see any reason for us to to not. I mean, I, I don't know. I just don't, I don't. I can't imagine us losing. To be honest, it's just it's just hard to put it in a, in a nice way. It's just yeah. I'm very confident in our guys, and we've been working hard, so. It's just, it's just natural. We should just be winning. I did try to get Waterloo to give me a little bit, and um, it was the nicest shit talk I've ever heard in my life. So, uh, you know, I guess, I guess use that. But um, I, <laughs> go ahead. I mean, definitely from my my standpoint, um, because they're calling us like the Yankees and all that stuff. It's very hard for them to want to shit talk us, right? It's going to be a little way around. And for my position as a coach, that's really not my role either. I think. Um, what's funny is that there is this meme that I don't know if it's too well known, but my players bring it up to me all the time. Um, it's, it's like whenever they're in solo queue, if they're having a bad game or having a good game, there'll be this meme. People just say, Harrisburg will win East. And that's just where we stand at this point, where if we don't follow up to that meme, we actually will just become the meme itself. Um, and whether or not that meme is a good meme or a bad meme really depends on how you know the playoffs turns out. But um, to me, it's just... It doesn't really matter, right? It's just, in the end of the day, as long as we work hard and we do our best, that's all I ask from you guys. Yeah. And I think we have been doing all that, so I see no reason why that meme won't be a good meme by the end of this year or end of this uh, split or whatever it's called. I got you. Mm-hmm. Um, to be fair, just so apples are apples and everything's on the table, if I recall correctly, I was the one who um, brought up the Yankees analogy based on the conversation. So it's not like any one of them was just straight up like, oh, they're the fucking Yankees. I was just like, okay, so I'm kind of getting this vibe that they're kind of the Yankees and you guys kind of feel like you're this ragtag, scrappy bunch of young lads going to come in and try to take down Goliath. And they didn't disagree with the analogy is, is where I should put that, I suppose. I mean, yeah, I think looking at it, we definitely spend much more resources. We have more players. We have our own facility. There's definitely a lot that we have over these guys. And I mean, I, I don't blame I don't blame them for agreeing with that statement. It's definitely a fair statement. But at the same time, the Yankees are the Yankees because they win a lot of games too. Right. So as long as we can fill that, I, we're good. I got you. Um, so, and not to look too far ahead, obviously, but we've got two other undefeated teams, one being Waterloo, which you play tomorrow. Um, and that'll, that'll settle that, right? You know, I mean, mm-hmm. we'll get the answer to that real quick, but then there's still Stony Brook, who's also going to be six and zero out of the East. They get the buy this week. Um, moving forward in, in a world, in a scenario where it works out that Harrisburg is still undefeated through this weekend. What is what do the next steps look like for you, or are the teams in like the West, like maybe UC Irvine or you know one of those others? Who who challenges Harrisburg, and at what level? I'm sure all the top seeds from all the different conferences are going to be very very strong. That's how it usually is when it comes to uh, it comes to collegiate, right? Um, mm-hmm. I'm not scared of any team. I know that there's some good teams out there. All I care about is that we continue to work hard and keep improving. And that's, that's all that really matters. At the end of the day, like I said, if we work hard and we put in everything and we don't win, that's that's okay. That's how it is sometimes. But I'm very confident that if we do put in every, all our effort, we have a really good shot at winning. And that's all I ask from the guys. Just put in your best effort every day and we'll do well. I like that. Um, so again, hypothetical of some sorts. 
let's say Harrisburg makes a run, right? You get to land, you know, you guys are in on the LCS stage, stuff like that. Um, maybe you win, maybe you don't. I don't know. I just know that now I'm a, you know, I'm a kid at home. I want to play, and now you just blipped on my radar. All of a sudden, I know who Harrisburg is because I've seen you out there, and I start grinding solo queue. I make sure my grades are good. I make sure I got a good head on my shoulders. I make sure I play, you know, in lesser competitive leagues and get that experience. I learn how to communicate at that kind of level, so it's not just solo queue stuff, right? But what do I do once I have that foundation? Um, what do I do? to blip on Harrisburg's radar. Like, how do I get your attention so that you look at me and say, hey, I would like to, you know, potentially give that kid a shot, you know, maybe bring him out or set up a tryout. Like, how do I just blip on your radar um, so that way I can have an opportunity? I think definitely in collegiate, it's looking a little harder. Um, a lot of times you pick up players that just go to your school, right? And I think for Harrisburg, because they spend so much resources, they actually recruit not only from the U.S., but they'll, they'll look at trials from across the world too, and mm -hmm. that's something that is very unique to them. They, we don't have any, um, we don't have any um, imports right now, but that's something that I've been told is something that they want to look into. And so the biggest thing that I want to see and Harrisburg will want to see is um, in this strong play. Whether well, that's solo cube or, or some strong teams that you've been a part of, all that is very very important. I think. Um, putting in the games and putting in the effort and at the same time having a very strong mental and, and good attitude and just being flexible um, and willing to work in a team environment and it's because a lot of these guys are I mean in general people who play the legends tend to be fairly young and they don't have too much experience in team environments and it can be very hard if they're not willing to be flexible and willing to be adaptive to the environment and that's the biggest thing I ask for from each player is Look, I don't care where you stand right now as long as you work hard um, and you keep working hard and we'll be good. If the world were listening right now, what would you want to brag about about your boys? I think the biggest thing that I've, I've seen and something I'm really proud of is our guys, they, they work hard. And I tell them, hey guys, like I know you guys have so much to, to on your shoulders, you have school, you have league, you have all these things you need to worry about, and they're able to work hard for me every day. And it's something that is I feel like just can't be can't be taken for granted. Um, all these guys, they're willing to to put out um, extra time to play solo queue. They're putting they're willing to put in time and during our practice to, to do their best. And then they still have to go to all all their schooling and all their studying and their finals and all that stuff. It's it makes me proud. I feel like a little. I feel like a father sometimes. Just like <laughs> talking to the guys, like man, you guys are being great. Uh, I'm proud of you guys, and um, I tell them every day, like, good old guys, you guys worked hard, and they do. They really do. I really mean it. And sometimes they might not think that, but when we play these swims, it's just not every day is going to be a win. Not every day is going to be um, be perfect. But as long as we learn something and we keep getting better and we keep working hard, I feel that's just really that's just the recipe for success. And I'm really, yeah, I'm really proud of you guys for, for the hard work. And I want to keep it up. And we only have a few more months left, guys. Just, that's all we need. Awesome. Um, and then just to kind of wrap things up, because, again, we get a lot of young viewers. We get a lot of people not plugged in to the game itself. But, you know, family, friends are attached. Um, and they'll watch this and they'll watch the game because, you know, it's their son, niece, nephew, daughter, whoever that's that's playing. So, you know, it's it's like the soccer mom. Like she takes her kid out on Saturday mornings, but she doesn't necessarily know who like Ronaldo is, right? Yeah. Um, well, are are there any words? Are there anything? Or is there any parent interaction you've had with current players, or anything you would want to say to that next generation that's looking to step up? I think if any sort of family member, any sort of friend is watching this video, I I'm very happy that they are. It means that they're supportive of their friend, their family member, whoever, their relative, whatever the, the relationship is. And that's that's all that kind of esports and sports, all these things, that's that's the whole goal, right? To bring people together of all different race, religion, sexes, gender, whatever, it, all sorts of whatever. And it's awesome to have even people from different generations come together and be like, hey, like that's that's somebody I know. This is pretty cool. I might not understand it. And that's that's something that I've, I've seen over the years. From playing League of Legends for nine years, I've seen the differences 
um, in the way people are seen from playing esports and, and whatnot. And to see it continue to grow and, and trend in a positive direction, to me, is another sign of how great esports is and how long its longevity is going to be. And when, you know, in a couple, couple of years, when I'm even older, maybe I have kids and, and they're going to college or whatever, you know, that will be for a while now. But um, <laughs> to see esports then and to see um, more growth then is really the result of the effort that people are putting in today. Yeah. And yeah, to me, that's just it's exciting to see the growth of esports from, from where it's gone. And I was in college, right? Um, and there was no sort of esports, there's no League of Legends. And nowadays, it's a different, completely different landscape. Yeah, for sure. Well said. All right. Well, that's pretty much it. And Alex, um, Coach Alex, Coach, wait, what do your <laughs> so what do your players call you? Do they, is it Coach Mr. Special? Is it Coach X? Is it, yeah, um, that honestly, I wish my name wasn't such a mouthful. I just tell them to call me Alex, just because it's simple. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, it's just uh, it's the, whatever they want, really. Got it. Okay. Well, Coach Alex, I appreciate you taking the time, and like I messaged before, man, I appreciate you lending your voice, right? Because you have a bigger megaphone than most um, to the collegiate narrative, to the foundation of what will be uh, the next generation of League of Legends players. Um, you obviously didn't have to do this, but, um, I really do appreciate you taking the time to talk to me and just go through a few questions. I wish you the best of luck tomorrow and in the future rounds. Um, for the record, I do hate the Yankees, but I, (laughs) but I do not hate Harrisburg. Uh, I I hope things go well. Yeah. And I, and I hope that we have the opportunity to continue doing these because you guys, Keep putting forth your best effort, and you keep winning games. That's why I hope for Tim. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm at the bar going hard with a couple shorties. But that's just the ordinary.